Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining me once again today. I do really appreciate your company. The idea of this channel uh, has always been um, to see just one person restored to God would, would, would be the whole basis for it. But if many, well, that, that would be a blessing too. But if only one was ever saved, that would restored to God, that would be the thing. Or if, if it helps people in some small way, praise the Lord for that. It's, it's not to promote myself or it would be bunk, it's to glorify the Lord God. So today I want to talk to you about salvation because the reason that I stand here before you today and I tell you about the Lord is because I'm saved. And I want to talk to you about salvation. There are very uh, different ideas about what it is and why it is and some people think you work for it some people think you're tapped on the shoulder for it some people think they'll bargain with God for it there's all kinds of different ideologies about salvation and you know basically a lot of them are not biblical <laughs> so what I want to do is I want to talk about uncommitted salvation and uncommitted salvation means a few different things for a person who's uh, never been saved and never come to God and never accepted Christ and never drawn upon the Holy Spirit, th they never committed to that. Okay. Then there are those who have professed Christ, who've come to Christ um, and are saved, but have never really committed themselves to that salvation that they've got. Okay, And they've gone away or not served or done something else. So there's different things involved in my topic today of uncommitted salvation but today I want to tell you that look firstly um, you've probably been approached by somebody in the street with, with a track something like this okay and it'll tell you about how you, you can accept Jesus Christ as your saviour this is a, a way we reach people um, to uh, talk to them about Christ um, you know, sometimes in special occasions we might give out the Gospel of John or we may even give a Bible to somebody who shows some interest. But generally it's a tract and inside of that tract it gives you the verses in the Bible that, that tell you about salvation and, and how you can achieve it. And that's basically, you know, what we do. And many people have been saved through this little tract because they'll read in here what it is and then we say to them, listen, go and look in the Bible, make sure that you believe that. Or we open up our Bible and we show them and we say, it's in the Bible, okay? If someone hands you a tract and they're not willing to show you what's, what it says in the Bible, then be very cautious because it, what it says in here should represent exactly word for word what it says in here. If it doesn't, the alarm bell should ring because there's something not right. So, people have come to the Lord and committed themselves to salvation through these tracts, but by reading and seeing for themselves that it's in the Bible and we didn't just print this and make it up, and they've committed to salvation. But then you have those who've never done it, and, and they throw the track in the rubbish, and a lot do that, you know, and some stick it in their pocket and chuck it in the rubbish when they're out of sight, or whatever. There's all kinds of different people who approach this in a different way. So... I'm going to talk firstly about uncommitted salvation to those who have actually accepted Christ as a saviour, but then have not committed to it and followed it through. And some churches refer to those people as backsliders or they, they just did a quick prayer and they weren't really saved and all kinds of different things. It's not that simple. It's not that simple. And if, if you just adopt that mentality all the time, you throw people on the scrap heap. Um, and, and you never really understand them, okay? So it's, it's more to it than that, and I'll go into a, a, a lot more depth later. But basically, somebody can get saved um, and uh, go to a church, um, and the church may not be spiritually feeding the people, um, it, may, it may have a different doctrine or, or something to what's in the, the Bible that they've got at home, and, and, and they get disillusioned, and they think, oh, this is all mixed up, and they go away. But they were genuine about their, their repentance to the Lord. They were genuine about their heart to Christ. They were genuine about accepting the Holy Spirit. But they're not genuine about the church or, the, or the, the churches in their area that are preaching a different thing. So, as a result, they don't go to church. But then people would say, well, hey, hang on a minute. They're a backslider. They don't go to church. We're not to judge of those things, okay? If someone is genuine in their committed salvation to the Lord, that's good. That's, that's what the Lord wants. But if there's something that's taking them away from it, 
Prayerfully, they would move away from that and find a church where they can grow and they can do something. But look, you know, some people don't have the motivation to do that, sadly, or they're, they're, they're old or they're in ill health or, or, or they're young. Or, or There's all kinds of different things. But just because a person's not attending the church, it's better if they do, but just because a person's not attending the church or not attending your church, <laughs> hello, um, doesn't mean you're not saved. Just, just because they are, um, I guess what some would say, uh, not doing anything, it doesn't mean you're not saved. It's between them and the Lord if they're really saved. It's not up to another Christian to come along and go, oh, I don't think he's saved, he doesn't do anything. You know, it's not your job. It's, it's not your duty to be chucking people on the scrap heap. The, Jesus never did that. You've got to love people. You've got to tell them that if there's something wrong, but you've got to love them too, okay? And walk around and go, oh, don't worry about him, don't worry about her, you know, they're not saved. And, and that's wrong. That's wrong. The, you, you become the judge, and you're not the judge. God is the judge. And I always say, you know, I'm not your judge and I never will be your judge and you will never be my judge. And that's the grace of God. God is our judge. He's equal with all. But those people that have done those things and, and then there are people who won't accept this track, who won't come to Christ because they've seen people, well, I just spoke to you about, who've been thrown on the scrap heap. And you give them a track and they go, I've seen all this before, I'm not interested. Go away. Hurt my friend. What's that? Well, again, that's uncommitted salvation, isn't it? Because the person who committed himself to salvation needed to explain it better to their friend. Not the problems that mankind produces. No, no. Because there'll always be problems no matter what church you're in, no matter what Christian organisation you're part of. There'll always be issues. Because that's men. But your job is to tell people about the love of Christ, the change in your life that Christ could make, the, 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 the way that you came to Christ, the love that Christ has. That's what you need to be telling people, not what the men did to you, not what the church did to you, because quite often that could be wrong. Okay. So again, there's a whole bunch of consequences that when people don't commit to salvation properly. If you're truly saved today, and I pray many of you are, and maybe some of you aren't, but listen on please, because you need to be able to tell others. You need to be able to tell others about the love of Christ. You need to tell others that you know that there is a hope, there is a way, there is a peace, there is a grace, there is a mercy. You need to be able to tell them those things. You need to be able to tell them, this is truth, this can change lives. And it does change lives. But at the same time, don't be, I guess, you know, fooled into believing that the Christian life is a perfect life. Don't be fooled into believing that everyone who calls himself a Christian is a Christian. Don't be fooled into believing that you, you, you're going to have uh, you know, all these miracles around you every day. It doesn't work that way because the devil's in the world, okay? And he's attacking, he's attacking, he's attacking. But there are miracles every day if you want to look for them. There's a new child born every day. It's a miracle of God, okay? There are new flowers every day. It's a miracle of God. There's a sunset and a sunrise every day. That's a miracle of God. There's a stars in the sky and the firmament. That's a miracle of God. Okay? There are other millions of miracles that God never gets credit for. Anyway, today as we go through the different processes of salvation, I pray today, listen carefully and closely, please, because I know the Bible can help you overcome any problems that you're having with the salvation, whether you've committed it or uncommitted it, we can sort it out through God's holy word. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the blessed word of the Bible. We thank you for the love and the grace and the mercy that comes through this book. We thank you for the martyrs and the saints who have uh, suffered for this book. Father, we pray that this book would be preserved, your love and your word would be preserved. You promised it will, Father. And those people did not die in vain. Father, today as we talk about salvation and people being pulled out of the fire, uh, Father, I pray today that eyes, ears and hearts will be open to understand, Lord, that salvation is the only way to get to heaven. There is no other way. Jesus Christ said, I'm the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And these are true words, Father. Pray today for those listening who are saved and those who may not be saved or may be considering salvation, Lord, that your word would speak to them boldly and clearly. We pray all these things in the wonderful name of Christ our Saviour. Amen.
the first and foremost thing we must do when it comes to salvation is not listen to what man has to say, but listen to what the Lord has to say in his word, the Bible. Turn with me to the book of Romans because this gives us a, a great understanding of salvation. Romans chapter 10 in verse 9, it says this, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It's simple. You believe in the Lord? Do you believe he's the Lord? Do you believe that he's not a dead saviour? He's a risen saviour? Do you believe he's alive at the right hand throne of God? Do you believe he can cure you of all your sins? Because a man can't. No, simple man can't cure. Verse 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So if you confess these things before the Lord, he says, you're saved. That's what it is, salvation. You've committed yourself to salvation. If you've done it with a whole heart, Whole body, mind, and soul. Yeah, a whole one. Verse 11. For the scriptures say, Whosoever believe on him shall not be ashamed. Now, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you won't be ashamed if somebody says to you, well, What are you? You say, Well, I'm, I'm saved. I'm saved the way the Bible says I'm saved. I'm not ashamed of it. There are a lot of people who want to rub your nose in the dirt and call you all kinds of horrible things and mistreat you because you say you love God. It's common. It happens all the time. It happens to me every day, nearly, somewhere. People just do not like the fact you love God because they misunderstand it. Verse 12. For there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. So God's not a respecter of persons. It doesn't matter in the Bible it calls you a Jew or Greek. It's just referring to everybody and anybody. That's just another way of saying it, okay? It doesn't matter who you are. He's the God of all and he treats you all the same. No difference. He's God of equality. You know? That's why people go, oh, but he doesn't like me because I'm a... No, no. No, no. no, no. We're all judged equally the same way under the same law. <sighs> yeah. um, so here we go. And it says, For there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. So he'll all that call upon him, no matter who you are, he, he'll treat you equally, okay? And then verse 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Again, the Lord reaffirms it. You shall be saved. It doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, what you've done. It doesn't matter how bad you are, how good you think you are. It doesn't matter. The Lord is is open and willing to save anyone who's willing to commit to him. Commit your, your heart to him. Commit your life to him. And many do. But then, why do I say that, you know, some have got uncommitted salvation? Well, they have committed to it. But they haven't committed to the things that salvation needs you to do. Okay? Because... If you love the Lord and you come to the Lord and you're committed to salvation, okay, you need to commit to the things that the Lord wants you to do, okay? He wants you firstly to love Him, of course. He wants you to tell others about Him, okay? And He wants you to be able to, to do works for Him, okay? Works for Him, yeah, absolutely. But you don't get saved by those works, you're already saved, remember? You commit to Him first, okay? You love Him and serve Him and then you do your works. That's the way it works. But if, you, if you're just doing works, that doesn't cut it. If you think you can get and, and bargain with God, the Bible says your mouth's closed after you're dead. Think about it. <laughs> mouth is closed. It don't work. <laughs> so anyway, you, you can see what, what we refer to the Romans road. Um, it, it tells you that how to be saved. It says if you call upon the Lord Jesus Christ, trust him as Lord, okay? Ask for forgiveness of sins and, and, and continue to love him and not be ashamed, okay? Now, there are those people who get saved and go away and, and, and do absolutely nothing about it. This is the first ones I'll address today. They don't serve, they don't tell others, they don't do anything. Now, many people in, in, in my circles of, of the church, unfortunately, have got a mindset, okay, and it's sad, that the person's not really saved. That's what they think. Well, I'm different. I, I don't want to be the judge of that, okay? That's, that's not for me. Because, you know, they come from the point of view and they say, well, they're not doing anything for God. They can't really be saved. 
Is that for you to judge? I don't think it is. You know, I've known quite a few people who have lived in, in different places where, there, where there's no church that's giving out the Bible in the correct manner so that they don't go to church. But they still talk to people about God. They still talk to the strangers every day about the love of God. They still pray to God. They still love God. But under the philosophy of some of these other people, they go, they're not saved. They're not in the church. Anyway, I don't want to go there too much because and dwell on that subject too much. But again, it's very simple for me. I'm not the judge. Salvation is between the person and God. That's what it is. It's between the person and God. Now, what about people who are in an area where there's plenty of churches who, who uh, follow the, the Bible? And, and you know, I, I live in the city of Sydney. And look, yeah, there'd be 30 churches that I know of just within my local area that, that preach the Bible as the Bible. Okay? They don't change it. They don't mix it up. You know, they use a, a KJV Bible. And, and they say what's in it. Okay? They don't use some other version with things added or things left out. They don't use some uh, Bible written by some man, you know, 100 years ago or 50 years ago, and it's got all the commentary in it. They just use the Bible for the Bible. Um, and, okay, so the group of people that are not doing anything for the Lord, that live in those areas, well, again, they would simply say, hey, he's not saved, she's not saved. There's no fruit, there's no evidence, there's nothing to say that those people are saved. Well, that's bunk. Again, you're playing God if you're doing that, okay? Because salvation is between them and God, okay? You don't know what they do. You don't know what their heart is. Sure, God says that we're to walk with him, we're to, we're to love him, we're to tell others, we're to do things for him. But you don't know what they do. I don't know what they do. So I'm not going to judge. Okay, that's that group. Now let's look at the group of people who, who come out of something really bad, like me, coming out of rock music and, and, and drugs and alcohol and all the yucky things that, that go with that, okay? Or, or somebody who, who's, who's lived a terrible life as a criminal or something. What about people who come out of, in, in, into that? Okay, praise the Lord, they change their life. But then there are some that turn back. What about them? Hmm. Well, again, the simple thing to say is, well, they were never truly saved. Is that right? Okay, well, again, I disagree. Even though they've gone back into that horrible life, the devil has lured them back into that horrible life, we don't know 100% for sure if they were saved or not saved. What we do know is they had a weakness. We do know that they didn't keep committing their uh, salvation. They didn't keep working for the Lord. They ran away from it. And trust me, anybody I've ever known who's done that, boy, they're in a mess. Because they know the truth. They know what's right. They know right from wrong. And every day is a struggle for somebody who's done that. It's, it's horrible. I cannot contemplate for one second how you could go back to that when you've come out of it and you look back at it and you go, oh my goodness, it's a it's bucket of vomit. I don't want to be there. It's, it's, there's nothing good in it. Everything is bad for my body, for my mind, for my soul. Everything there is against God, mocking God, blaspheming God. Why would you go back there? Is that the place for a Christian who's accepted Christ? You'd be grieving the Holy Spirit back there, muting the Holy Spirit back there. But am I going to say that they're not saved? I can't. I can't say that. I can say there's no fruit in their life. I can say that they've walked away from God. I could say they're a backslider. But I could never, ever, ever say to you that they are not saved. Because that's not my job. When they stand before God, he would know their heart. Who can know the heart of a man? Who can know what goes on there? Who can know the heart of a woman, what goes on there? Who can even know the heart of a child, what goes on there? You can't. 
You cannot know. But God knows. He knows exactly what is going on. And I'm not going to be the judge of those things, but I just pray anybody who's gone back that you would just turn back as quick as you possibly can and restore the blessings and be back in the presence of God because, boy, that's a, a dark and terrible place to be back there. Let's look at some more verses. Turn to the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. It says this, For by grace are ye saved through faith. Through faith. You say through faith, having the faith to come to Christ, having the faith to trust Him. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. You've got to have that faith. Okay? Very mm, important. By grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourself. It is a gift of God. Not of yourself, it's a gift of God. You cannot be saved by a man, because the Bible says it's a gift of God. Are they a God? Certainly not. They might think they are. But to be saved, it's a gift from God, not from a man. You know, there are people out there who go, oh, no, you don't know if you can be saved. Well, the Bible doesn't say that. Where do they get that idea from? There are people who say, oh, you don't know if you're going to be in heaven for sure. My Bible doesn't say that. They made that up. They're all bunk. Don't listen to that nonsense. I don't care how educated the man is. The Bible doesn't say that. It's a gift from God. Okay, uh, move, moving on. It's a gift from God. It's not of works, verse 9, lest any man should boast. You see, God says it's my gift. It's not of what you do. I don't want you to boast. There are people who believe you have to come to God through a man. No, you don't. You come through Christ. It says this, verse 10, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. God had said to us from the beginning of Genesis to the end of Revelation that we're created in his image. We're created to love him. We're created to worship him. We're created to give him honour. He created us for that work. And everybody's got a place in their heart for that that only God can fill. And if you commit to salvation, the greatest thing you can do is to follow the salvation and do what God asks you to do. Love him, worship him, tell others, and do things for him. Those are the things that you need to do. But like I said, there's uncommitted salvation where people don't commit to those things. doesn't mean they're not saved, but it's very difficult life. It's easier to slip backwards if you haven't committed yourself to those things. And those people who have slipped backwards, I can assure you, it's because they haven't committed to those things, okay? And look, I've known some incredibly, incredible, fired up Christians over the years um, who have led many people to, to, to serve the Saviour. Um, and then somehow the wick's gone out and they've gone backwards. And they were serving, 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 serving. Then something happened. And they're gone back into the world. Why? Well, who knows? I don't really know the answer. And I've spoken many times before about the late Billy Graham and the man who used to set up all his conferences around the world for him and, and you know, and all his rallies and everything that saw people get saved. You know, I still hear people today and talk to people who got saved at a Billy Graham rally. Look, and, and the man who organised those things for him went back into the world. After all, he saw such wonders. It can happen. People can go backwards. It happens in the Bible. We read about people loving the Lord and then turning their back on him, don't we? We read all, all the time. And it does happen because they're uncommitted Salvation. They haven't committed to what God wanted them to do. And what about those? Now, let's look at those who've never committed to salvation at all. And, you know, they've had one of these tracks um, uh, passed to them in the street and uh, they've uh, uh, either said, you know, something really nasty, swore at you, um, or used the Lord's name in vain, or I've had people want to punch me. Um, I've had all kinds of things. I've had doors slammed on me. Um, you know, I haven't had a person tell me they want to shoot me. Look, people. God is a God of love, mercy, grace, forgiveness, and equality. 
He's not going to judge you any different to the way he judges me or anybody else. But somehow people have this ideology that God judges differently. No. God's got one set of laws. Sometimes men want to change that with bylaws and everything else, don't they? <laughs> Talk about laws. Oh, dear, dear, don't get me started, you know. God has got a set of laws and no bylaws. <laughs> you know, they just built a new house next to me and the council's got 300 bylaws that they have to do. <laughs> it's just crazy. <laughs> People are tearing their hair out and the workmen are coming back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. It's because of all the bylaws, people, you know. And, and anyone who's ever read the Road Rules book, you'd know that there's laws, but then there's 10 bylaws to go with it. And if you've ever been involved in law, and my son is, you'd see that there's a law, but then there's 47, 48, 49, 50, 52, 100 bylaws within that law, because man can't make up his mind. <laughs> but God makes up his mind. It's, it's one law, and it's for everybody, okay? No bylaws. It's very simple. God's word is complete, but when you come to men, oh boy. And, you know, people are offended when you want to give them this track because they think somehow there's a judgment from you in it. There's no judgment from me in it. No, it's not. I just want to tell you about the Lord Jesus Christ. That's all I want to do. And, you know, there, there are places where you can't stand and hand it out. There are places where if you stand in front of something, they'll tell you to go away. So you try and stand somewhere, do you? You're not in the middle of anything. You've just got lots of space around you and, you know, you, you can do it that way because people just get so offended with you hand, handing out a track. Now, you know, I, I'm not over, uh, you know, uh, uh, zealous and glib to stand out the, the front of a different faith and hand them out. I'm not going to do that, no. That wouldn't be respectful. I wouldn't do something like that. I try to be away from things in order to be able to hand them out. But there'll always be somebody who will find offence because they've never committed to this. They've never committed to salvation. They've never understood what it's about. Somebody's told them something and they don't like it and they go, oh, that's what it is. They've never even read it. <laughs> they've got no idea. They go, I don't want to know about that. I've had people say to me, well, God says this, 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 this. I go, huh? Where'd you read that? Oh, it's in the Bible, I'm sure it is. I know it's there, just don't know where it is. Well, I've read this Bible cover to cover on multiple occasions and it ain't there. <laughs> it's just not there, you know. Uh, I, I, I just don't understand where people get these things from. Well, they've got it from some mixed up book or some mixed up person or some person who's angry and makes up stories, but it's not what's in the Bible. I don't know. It's something completely different. So they've never committed to it. They won't even take a track and read it, let alone uh, commit to anything else. They're so busy. And there are those who just don't want to have to do anything, you know, to change their lifestyle or change whatever they're doing in life. They, don't, they, they just don't want to do anything. No, they'll just, I just want to live and couldn't care less about everything else. I've got lots of neighbours around me and they couldn't care less about it. No, they couldn't care less about it. You know, a lot of them are, are elderly, you know, and all they, all they do all day is sit down and watch television. Fill their mind with rubbish or listen to the radio. Rubbish. Absolute garbage. When they could be having a better life through Christ. They, they, they could be understanding what it is to have grace, mercy, forgiveness. And they're sitting there going, oh, well, I, I don't know what's going to happen when I die in a few years. I'll just, Bob and Jill will get the house and uh, uh, Joe will get my car and... Uh, I better fix the will, uh, or I better watch, listen to the radio and watch the news first. They've got no, they don't even know about their soul, their eternal destiny. They're worried about only having a few years left on earth. Oh my goodness, wake up people, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. You've got to spend an eternity somewhere. Let's look at some more verses. I love this verse because it tells you everything you need to know about salvation. It says this, in chapter 4 of Acts, verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Must be saved. Not can be saved, not should be saved. Must, must be saved is what the Bible says. Now let me read that slowly because I went maybe too quick. It says, neither is there any, uh, neither is there salvation in any other. So firstly, there's not salvation in any other thing, not in a man, not in works, not in, in Calvinism, not in anything. There's no salvation, it says, 
Okay? For there is no other name under heaven. No name. The Bible says there's not another name. You can't be saved under any other name. But there is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. And what's that name? You can probably tell me before I even tell you. It's Jesus Christ. John 14, 6 says this. Jesus speaking, words in red in my Bible, it says, I am the way. Not some way, not one of the ways. Christ said, I am the way, the only way. I am the way. Jesus said, I am the truth. The truth, meaning everything else, is not true. It's a lie. He's the truth. She said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, the life. Jesus says, you want life everlasting, come to me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. For well, no man, no man, that's mankind, comes unto the Father but by me. Jesus says, you can't come to the Father but by me. There's no other name given under heaven. The Lord has not ordained any other name from which you can be saved. No man. No saint, no martyr, no priest, no minister, no pastor, no Christian. The only name that you can be saved under is that of Jesus Christ. There is no other way. You cannot work your way to heaven because that cheapens the cross. That means Christ died in vain. That's blasphemy. Your works, no. You don't get tapped on the shoulder. The Calvinists are liars. They deceive you. They deceive themselves. God is not a respecter of persons. He's not going to tap you on the shoulder and say you're saved. No, no. It doesn't work that way. You have to come to him. God is not the author of evil. If you make out that God makes people to throw them into hell, then, boy, there's something really wrong with you. That takes away the notion that God is love. God makes everybody equal, everybody with a chance. He doesn't make people that so they can have no chance. Calvinism's discrimination, folks. Don't listen to that. There's no other name given under heaven by which you must be saved. Must be saved. It's not a tap on the shoulder. It's not your works. It's not a man. It is Christ and Christ alone. There is no other way. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, which is you and me, and everybody. He didn't say just some people. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, which means he's the same, he's the trinity. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Wow. The three are one. There are three that bear the record in heaven. You know, I saw somebody the other day say, Hey, you know the word trinity doesn't appear in the Bible? No, it doesn't. That doesn't matter. There's a lot of words like dinosaur and all other things that don't appear in the Bible. There are other words for it. But there are three. The Bible tells us there are three that bear the record in heaven. That's three as a trinity, folks. That's what it is. Anyway. There's no other way other than through Christ. That's the way to commit yourself to salvation. And then commit to follow that salvation by doing the things that God asks you to do. Love him with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. Tell others. And then serve him. That's the committing of salvation. That's what it's for. That's what you do. And when you're doing that, you can't go the other way. But the moment you stop doing that, you can go the other way because the devil will get a hold of you with a big rope and start pulling you away from God. That's what happens. But you go, oh, there's no devil. Well, you believe that, just look at the world. Boy, oh boy. Okay, a few more verses in closing. We'll go to the Psalms. Firstly, let's go to the uh, book of Psalms, uh, Psalm 3, verse 8. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. Amen. And then Psalm 37, verse 39. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in a time of trouble. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. How about this one? Uh, Psalm 62, verse 1. It says, Truly my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation. From him cometh my salvation. From God comes salvation. No other way. It is a gift of God. We read it today. 
David told us way back there, salvation is, is through the God. It's his gift. It's his grace. It's his mercy. It's his love. It's nothing to do with men. As I told you at the beginning of this message today, this channel is to tell people about the love of God, the salvation of John, and, and, and how everybody is, is equal. Okay, That's what it's for. It's not about me. If it's about me, it means nothing. Absolute bunk. It's about you. It's about you knowing God. It's about you understanding the Bible. It's about you accepting the truth. That's what it's about. It's, it's nothing to do with the man. Can't do anything. So next time, maybe if somebody hands you one of these tracks, why don't you stop and have a chat to them? Why don't you just stop and say, hey, look, you know, tell me more. But if you're going to tell me more, show me something out of the Bible. Don't just tell me something and make it up because I don't want to hear that. And, and, and if they're real and they're true, you know, they, they will open a Bible and they will show you. And don't take anything other than the Bible Bible, not some commentary by a man 50 years ago or 100 years ago or 300 years ago. The Bible, okay? The first book ever written. The book that doesn't have a copyright on it. The, and this man's changed it, okay? The, the book that God made. His word, his mercy, his grace. And it's not hard to understand. People say that all the time, but that's just an excuse not to read it, okay? And you know what? <laughs> you can read this book, you know? It might take me five years to get through this book. Some people do it in a year. I can't. I go slow. I only study it and I learn because... I like the simpleness that God puts in here because that way everyone can be saved. Everyone can commit themselves to salvation. If you've got uncommitted salvation, you've never committed to salvation, you've never been saved, I beg if you do it, do it. You're not guaranteed it tomorrow. And if you are a Christian and you've got uncommitted salvation and you've not committed to do the things of the Lord and you've gone back somewhere, turn back. Turn back because this is a God who's in the business of forgiveness. This is a God who's in the business of love. This isn't a God who's in the business of equality. This is a God who wants you, me, and everybody to be in his presence. He's willing that none should perish. What a wonderful, a wonderful God we serve. Thank you for being with me today. And I pray, I really, really pray with all my heart that you would commit yourself unto salvation today. Lord bless. Bye for now.